As you travel across the endless sands of the desert, reeling and ready to succumb to exhaustion, your eyes fixate on what appears to be a figure, that of a man, standing with an almost regal bearing atop a nearby dune. He approaches and offers his hand to help you up. Would this stranger be your savior, or just another mirage? Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Monster of the Week, the show where we dig up old creatures from past editions of D&D and other tabletop games and bring them to light for use in your current 5th edition campaign. My name is Josiah, also known as Dungeon Dad, and today we are going to be taking a look at yet another Gary Gygax original creature. First published for 2nd edition D&D, this creature made its debut in Dragon Magazine number 66. It appeared alongside the likes of the Dao and the Marid, meant to be a new group of genies. Now as you may know, all genies in D&D are elemental creatures. Each one of them is aligned with one of the four elements. You've got the Efridi who are are fire elementals, the Jin, who are air elementals, Marids being water elementals, and Dao being earth elementals. Today's monster, the Jani, or Jan, if there's more than one of them, are a culmination of all four elements brought into one. They are a genie that is made up not of just elemental air, earth, water, or fire, but all four brought together. Now this unique elemental nature comes with some bonuses and some sacrifices that these creatures have to make. For instance, all Jan are bound to the material plane. They can survive for up to a couple days on all of the elemental planes, which is great, but ultimately their home is here. They're also a lot more human in appearance. A Jani could easily be mistaken for a human, albeit much more charismatic and a bit taller. They're typically found in the desert. Now that said, if in your setting you decide they are seafaring folk or whatever, they could fit anywhere. But as per the lore we have in the books, they are usually found as the guardian of oases. Now they're much less powerful than the other true genies, and they would consider the Jan to not really be true genies, even though they really are. But that said, they are still immortal and they are still much more than a match for any regular mortal creature like an elf, human, or dwarf. And this creature just being a thing answers a question that you may not have known you had, which is what would a genie with all four elements look like? And it also fills a nice little niche in the supernatural department. They can be great friends, gracious hosts, or vindictive enemies depending on how they're treated. And today I'm going to talk to you about what they can do in battle, some modifications I've made to make this creature a little bit more interesting, and of course some plot hooks that you can use in your campaign. So saddle up your favorite desert mount, because it's time for... In battle, Jan fight very similarly to the way other genies fight. They're not quite as fast, but they do still have a fly speed of 30 feet. And like all genies, they do have a fairly powerful melee weapon attack, but the unique thing about the Jan is because they contain all four elements, they can choose what type of elemental damage they would like to add onto their weapon. Lending from their air elemental heritage, they can of course add lightning or thunder damage, and coming from their fire elemental heritage, they can add fire damage. And aside from being able to fly around the battlefield and doing some pretty substantial melee attacks, it of course has access to many spells. And this is where we find the biggest difference between this creature and the four other genies. It doesn't have a ton of combat spells, most of its spells are actually a lot more utilitarian. Now it can cast things like enlarge, reduce, absorb elements, and warding wind to give itself an edge in battle. However, its other spells, which it does have a fair amount of, are used primarily out of combat. It has access to things like detect magic, guidance, and create food and water, which is extremely important if you live in a desert. Now I thought the Jan were really interesting, and I found it kind of cool that they have this utility approach to spells, especially considering their reputation as gracious hosts of the desert but I felt they needed a little extra push to just make them a bit more unique and therefore worth including in our games. So I went ahead and made a few. The first thing I did was I swapped out their scimitar for a different weapon called a Kopesh. If you're not familiar with what a Kopesh is, it is a real weapon that was used in ancient Egyptian times. It is technically a sword, but it has a wicked crescent-like curve to it that allows it to kind of have some more diversity in how it's used in battle. I found this to be flavorfully a bit more interesting as it differentiates them from the scimitar-wielding Jin, but it also has a mechanical benefit. 
Because of the shape of the blade and how it's wielded and how the Jan are trained to fight with it, it is in fact an exotic weapon that allows the Janny to reach around shields. So if a Janny makes an attack with this weapon against a creature wielding a shield, it negates the AC bonus granted to that creature by their shield. All this to say that if you have a paladin who's wearing full plate and a shield with an armor class of 20, if it is attacked with a Kopesh, the Kopesh can reach around that shield and then brings their armor class down to 18, thus negating the plus two bonus to armor class granted by the shield. I really like this just because it's not simply an interesting flavor, but it also creates a moment where this creature might roll a 19 on an attack roll against a paladin, and you can narrate how its weapon kind of maneuvers around the paladin's shield, and then suddenly it's this thing like, oh man, he has a different fighting style that makes my armor less effective. It's a unique trait that we don't see too often, but it's an interesting one. And then maybe the paladin opts to simply drop his shield and two-hand his longsword for extra damage because it's not doing him any good anyways. Or on the flip side, if your party is allied with a Janny, maybe they get trained in how to use a Kopesh if they want that exotic weapon proficiency, and then they can use it against their enemies, which kind of creates not necessarily a magical item, but it's a cool item that is rooted in a mundane world. Or on the flip side, if your party is allied with the Janny, maybe they ask to be trained in how to use this exotic weapon, and if they do so, they essentially have a long sword that they can reach around shields with, which is kind of like a magic weapon, but with its bonus rooted in a mundane origin, which is always fascinating to me. The other thing I wanted to add in here was a bit about Janny nobility, because we have noble versions of all the other genies, and that's another big difference with the Jan is that they can't actually grant wishes and their abilities seem to be more themed around assisting travelers and helping out those in need. And they also have this mystic connection with the very land itself and this desire to preserve oasis in the desert and kind of create safe places in an otherwise harsh environment. I mean, they are nomads after all, so they want to protect the nomadic lands in which they travel. All this to say that the Jan nobility have taken their assistive magic from casting things like Guidance to the next level. The nobility can cast things like Augury, Divination, and even Foresight. While not as potent as a wish, this is certainly a spectacular power that could help out your players on their journey wherever it is they're going. So if your party comes across a Seek, the noble genie of the desert, who is able to cast this magic for them in exchange for maybe performing some kind of quest, it might give them insight on whatever their main goal is. The alternative, of course, being it might use those powers for evil, and the sense of foresight could be a great asset to someone coming up with plots and schemes that only those who truly see the future would be able to conceive. And this brings us to our next topic, so as I did mention, you could use the Jan as they are kind of intended as a friendly encounter in the desert. Just a fascinating NPC or group of NPCs that the party comes across that is able to give them essentially room and board in a place they wouldn't expect to find something like that and maybe provide some insight about the area or whatever capacity you need them to work in. In the Janny culture, it's considered rude to send away any visitor, so even if your party isn't the most savory group, unless they actively do something to insult their hosts, then they should be able to find a place of respite. And I think that would be kind of funny too, role playing a begrudgingly gracious host who's helping the party, but mostly because they feel obliged to, especially if maybe they've overstayed their welcome. Or maybe you've even got a Janny who has come to the party asking for their help with guests that have overstayed their welcome. They've got another group of adventurers that are causing trouble within their commune, wherever it is in the desert, and the Janny is asking the party to basically coerce those people away. But of course they can't do this by simply attacking them, because if they did, the Janny would then feel responsible and have to defend its guests. So the party through roleplay or some kind of clever manipulation has to try to convince these other near-do-wells to leave. And maybe if they succeed, their gracious Janny host will offer them some kind of reward. Another thing to consider here is how the Janny in your world want to interact with any of the mortal races. Maybe they have a peaceful coexistence with a nearby human settlement in the desert, or maybe they're kind of at odds, not necessarily warring, but they don't really get along with the mortals who generally pass through their area. But whatever the case is, maybe your party is tasked with kind of repairing relations between these two peoples. Perhaps some humans, as they are ought to do, came in and kind of infringed upon the Janny's territory, just building a city there without giving much thought to the fact that someone might already be living there, even if there wasn't a massive settlement plainly in view. So your party is then tasked with kind of repairing relations and trying to learn about the Janny and see just exactly what 
their culture is all about and who they are and how we can cooperate. Maybe you've even got different clans of Janny that live out in the desert that aren't necessarily at war with one another, but again are competing for kind of political power. So your party is then entreated by a Janny who wants to ascend to the true power of a Jinn. If they're able to secure this and gain the ability to actually cast wishes and do all this other crazy magic that the true Jinns can do, then they would be able to rule kind of unopposed politically and forcefully if need be amongst all of the other Janny clans. In order to do this, of course, they need some kind of powerful artifact and they can't risk sending their own subordinates out because then the other clans will be tracking them and following them and it will just create a whole thing. So they go to outsiders to look for help. Your party, the party has to go find whatever the MacGuffin of your choice is and bring it back to this guy so that he can ascend and rule and of course reward the players in kind. Maybe there's even another Janny who is on the trail of doing the same thing who is perhaps evil and would act as the antagonist of such an adventure, sending out his minions to try to do the same thing and subverting your party at every turn. And kind of going back to this idea I toyed with earlier, perhaps a Janny has risen to power that is not such a great guy. This Jenny uses its gift of future sight to foresee battles between the other kingdoms and factions that are all kind of warring for this land. And as each kingdom falls to this Jenny's army, its power simply expands, kind of incorporating everything around it. And it's becoming a serious threat. How do you fight against an enemy that always knows where you're going to be, always knows the perfect time to strike, and always shows up at the absolute worst times to poke holes in your defense? Maybe this small kingdom that's kind of fighting for survival has come into possession of an orb of mind blank or something like that that allows a certain number of creatures in an area to be concealed from this genie's foresight. The party could be given such an object and tasked with subverting this genie's plans and ultimately bringing down this empire. They keep this orb with them and as long as they have it, the genie can't predict what they're going to do, making them the ultimate defense and weapon against this rising tyrant. Ultimately, I think the Janny are something fascinating that offers a glimpse into your world and the mechanics of the greater powers that are kind of moving behind the scenes without having to pull back that curtain, just through their very existence. And if you've got a game planned where your party is traveling through a desert anytime soon, these guys can be a great encounter that doesn't necessarily have to be battle, but can kind of spice up the desert, make it feel more alive literally breathing life into what would otherwise be a wasteland. Now, if you've ever had an encounter with these creatures in the past, maybe you've deployed them as a DM or had them deployed in a game that you've played in, definitely leave a comment about that and tell us all about it. Or maybe you're hearing about this creature for the first time and you've got some ideas for how you'd like to use this in a campaign. Definitely tell us about that too. I seriously find the comment section on all of these videos such an awesome place to find inspiration for the creatures we talk about here. So big ups to the whole community for that. You guys are awesome. And and as always, if you do want to use this creature in your game, in the description below, you will find a link to the Google document, which has all the information you will need to run this creature from start to finish. And if you are one of my fantastic patrons, you can of course get the monster manual style stat block, either in the Google Drive or on the Patreon page itself. And if you don't have a link to the Google Drive, you can find that link on the Patreon page. Another thing I've been meaning to mention for like the past three weeks that I literally just keep forgetting to mention when I record, is that I am now in a D&D &D stream. I am playing in the world of Yarviskir, which is DM'd by my friend Ollie. You might know him as Ollie Rant. He's a graphic designer. He did all our characters up for us. Everything looks awesome. He's a super good DM, so we have a lot of fun over there. We play every Sunday night at 8 p.m. AST, which I think is midnight BST. But wherever you are in the world, if you can't catch it, you can see it all on his channel. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. We've been seriously having just a great time, so if you are interested in watching us play D&D &D and seeing how I play a ranger, please swing by and check that out. In any case, thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then.